Although not only impacting campervan and motorhome drivers, the changes that will come into effect in the UK Highway Code on 29th of January 2022 will have an impact on us. They are not the easiest to digest, so coming up is my interpretation of the changes that I think are most important to understand. So stick with us. Don't forget to check out our other videos on everything campervan and motorhome related, from solar to water, heating to gadgets, tyres to trips. If you like this video, please do hit the thumbs up. It really does help me to know what you like, and you can ask any questions or give feedback in the comments. If you want to make sure you don't miss any of our future videos, please hit the subscribe button and clicking the bell will give you a notification when a new video goes live. Finally, if you do decide to hit the thumbs down, it would be great if you could also leave a comment so I'd know what you didn't like. You can view the full changes to the UK Highway Code at the link in the video notes, but they are pretty detailed. So I picked out the points that I think are the most relevant to us as drivers of large vehicles to try and make them easier to understand. An interesting point is that though the changes to the highway code come into effect on the 29th of January 2022, they are not actually bound by law and are only at this stage advisory. When asked if there will be penalties for failing to follow the new code, the Department for Transport said, Although failure to comply with the advisory rules of the code will not in itself cause a person to be prosecuted, the Highway Code may be used in evidence in any court proceedings under the Traffic Acts to establish liability. This includes the rules which use advisory wording such as should, should not or do, do not. Enforcement of the law is a matter for the police who will decide on the evidence of each individual case whether an offence has been committed and the appropriate action to take. As most of us that passed our driving test some time ago may never have looked at the highway code since, it's definitely worth making sure you are clear on what will be expected of you as a driver of a vehicle after the new code comes into place. Rule H1, the new hierarchy of road users, says it's important that all road users are aware of the highway code, are considerate to other road users and understand their responsibility for safety to others. Everyone suffers when road collisions occur, whether they are physically injured or not, but those in charge of vehicles that can cause the greatest harm in the event of a collision bear the greatest responsibility to take care and reduce the danger they pose to others. This principle applies most strongly to drivers of large goods and passenger vehicles, vans, minibuses, cars, taxis and motorcycles. Cyclists, horse riders and drivers of horse-drawn vehicles likewise have a responsibility to reduce danger to pedestrians. None of this detracts from the responsibility of all road users, including pedestrians, cyclists and horse riders, to have regard for their own and other road users' safety. Always remember that the people you encounter may have impaired sight, hearing or mobility, and that this may not be obvious. So this is a suggestion that all road users have responsibility to look out for each other, but particularly those that are more vulnerable. I'm pretty sure that most of us would do this anyway, but it's a reminder of tolerance, joint responsibility and the need for good observation. This principle is developed further in two more specific rules that are worthy of note. Rule H2, the new priority for pedestrians at junction, applies to drivers, motorcyclists, horse-drawn vehicles, horse riders and cyclists. At a junction, you should give way to pedestrians crossing or waiting to cross a road into which or from which you are turning. You must give way to pedestrians on or waiting to cross a zebra crossing and to pedestrians and cyclists on or waiting to cross a parallel crossing. So firstly, if like me you're asking yourself what a parallel crossing is, it's where there is a zebra crossing with an adjacent cycle crossing. So you may not have known it, but previously you only had to give way to a pedestrian who was actually on a zebra crossing. Now it formalises that you have to do it if they're waiting to cross a zebra crossing, and the same for cyclists on a parallel crossing. I expect most of us would do this anyway. The more noticeable change from this rule is to mandate that if you are driving or cycling and turning into a street and a person is waiting to cross, the vehicle has to give way to the pedestrian to allow them to cross safely. Rule H3, a new priority for cyclists when a vehicle is turning, 
you should not cross across cyclists, horse riders or horse-drawn vehicles going ahead when you are turning into or out of a junction or changing direction or lane, just as you would not turn across the path of another motor vehicle. This applies whether they are using a cycle lane, a cycle track or riding ahead on the road and you should give way to them. Do not turn at a junction if to do so would cause the cyclist, horse rider or horse drawn vehicle going straight ahead to stop or swerve. You should stop and wait for a safe gap in the flow of cyclists if necessary. Again, I'd like to think that most of us would probably do this anyway. This is just my pick of the important changes that we as drivers of a vehicle could fall foul of if we were not careful. In the interest of balance, it's worth noting there are quite a few changes that pedestrians and cyclists will need to consider. For example, as a pedestrian, you should always remain aware of your environment and avoid unnecessary distractions. Always show due care and consideration for others. Look out for traffic turning into the road, especially from behind you, and cross at a place where drivers can see you. At a junction, when you are crossing or waiting to cross the road, other traffic should give way. And as a cyclist, at traffic light junctions and at cycle only crossings with traffic lights, you must not cross the stop line when the lights are red. On quieter roads or streets, if a faster vehicle comes up behind you, move to the left to enable them to overtake if you can do so safely. In slower moving traffic, when the traffic around you starts to flow more freely, move over to the left if you can do so safely so that faster vehicles behind you can overtake. And when riding on busy roads with vehicles moving faster than you, allow them to overtake where it is safe to do so. So overall there is nothing groundbreaking in the new rules but a few things that we probably like to think we do out of courtesy are now mandated. The biggest call out for me is a reminder of the importance of all-round observation and awareness to be able to drive safely by these new rules as you not only have to consider what is happening on the road ahead of you but all around you and on the pavement. I hope that quick rundown of the key changes is helpful and helps you to keep safe. Thanks for watching our video and as always if you have any questions or feedback please pop them in the comments below. If you find the video useful please like, share and consider subscribing.